line all 295 pounds of the cheeseburger Orlando Adams and in the secondary a very fine and aggressive secondary a good cornerback in number five Eric Davis Adams and Davis will be playing in the King Classic next month for these two football teams this afternoon the three and a half inches of snow certainly a consideration in how they are going to approach this football game offensively and defensively for Mississippi College they're a big play team Will the snow on the ground be a problem this afternoon? Well, we posed that question before the ball game to the Choctaws head coach, John Williams. Well, certainly we hope that it won't affect us. We played at Texas A&I three weeks ago in the uh, a, a pretty bad rain. We went to St. Cloud, Minnesota and played in eight inches of snow. Of course, they had the field a little clearer than they do here now. So we certainly try mentally not to let it affect us. I, I don't know that you can look at it two ways. As long as the ball is dry, it should not affect us. In fact, I think that uh, the more you handle the ball like running the wishbone and uh, it might have more chances to fumble than we will. So uh, I hope that a big play team might get in the end zone a little quicker than one that has to drive it uh, 12 or 15 times. These two teams met nine weeks ago. The ball game won in a dominating manner by the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. Before the ball game, we asked the Jack State coach Bill Burgess, would that first ball game be a factor for these two ball clubs as they prepared for this Division II title game? You know, really we don't. It's been about eight or nine weeks since we played that first ball game. And, you know, the things that you saw in the paper were that we got some breaks and we had some good things happen to us, they, they were actually true. And uh, we honestly believe that our players understand that. Uh, we're glad we won the first game. Now, don't misunderstand me, but I don't think that's going to have anything to do with this game. If it helps anybody, it's got to help Mississippi College because of the revenge factor or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But... We, we approached it that, hey, the first game didn't make any difference. Uh, this is a new game. Uh, we, our scouting reports were based on, you know, what they've done in the, you know, the playoffs. And uh, we didn't use anything from that first time we played them. The weather for this afternoon is chilly, 32 degrees, with a chill factor of 24. There's absolutely no chance of snow to add any dusting to the three and a half inches we already have. Robert Jenkins will kick it off for Mississippi College. It'll be Edmondson and Malone back to receive it. The short reception is up front. It is Johnson. Ralph Johnson breaking through the middle, and a snow-covered field gets it up around the 40-yard line, about the 44, as a matter of fact. And it's going to be difficult this afternoon, Jack Corrigan, with all the snow here on the ground to ascertain where the, where the markers are. Well, that'll end up being the 38-yard line as you look at the Jacksonville State offense headed up by their quarterback, David Gulledge. They have a whole stable of running backs, Ralph, and a very fine offensive line headed up by their center, Keith Henderson. Bill Burgess says he's the best, deep, best offensive lineman in Division II. Jacksonville State loves to keep it on the ground. How will the cold weather and the icy conditions affect him this afternoon as the first play gains about three yards? It's Roy Carpenter, who's averaging only four yards a carry, carrying it right off tackle. The defense from Mississippi College, Bruce Poole, McGee, Terry Fleming's their highlight. And Danny Bachman, their defensive right end, also does a good job. Good linebacker headed up by Roderick McGee, number 58. And a very opportunistic secondary, Brian Richardson, the strong safety, seven interceptions this year. The ball is on the 42, they officially call it. Second down and six, second play of the ball game. David Gullich, they spill him right at the line of scrimmage as Conwood, who has made 72 tackles this year, including three interceptions, comes along to make the stop for no gain. It'll be third down and six. Chanel Conway is the third of the Conway boys to play at Mississippi College. He has been a very fine performer for them. It's his second year, making his third year now as a starter for the Choctaws. David Gulledge, a great year, 48 of 97 passing, 838 yards. But his forte has been running. He's run for 16 touchdowns. They knock it loose and recovered by Mississippi College's Terry Fleming. Their All-American candidate knocks the ball away. Well, the one thing that John Williams talked about before the ball game, that the weather conditions might be a bigger problem for a wishbone offense that makes a lot of play fakes. And you can see right here, Gullitz trying to make the play fake to his fullback. Roy Carpenter lost the handle on the ball, and he was a little slow getting after it. And the All-American, Terry Fleming, with the first turnover of the ball game. 
That graphic may tell it all. Mississippi College with 52 takeaways. Flags go down as they complete the pass, and this is a throwing football team to the left side to Nathaniel Bolton, who's the all-time leading receiver for Jacksonville, for Mississippi College. Illegal procedure as Bob Mislow, the referee, makes the call. Illegal procedure against Mississippi College. Well, if there is any group ready for today's game, it's the officiating crew. They're from the North Central area. That's up at the North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota area. For these guys, hey, this is typical December. Well, it's probably warm for them. Jack, what a day would have been if we'd have been back two years ago and had this kind of weather when we had North Dakota State and uh, South Dakota State down here. If you look at the offensive backs for Mississippi College. We talked about Wally Henry and Nathaniel Bolton. Keep an eye on number 25 as well. Fred McAfee, the tailback, over 1,100 yards. Pretty good offensive line headed up by Jimmy Zilla, number 72. First and 15. This one's on a pitch out. This is McAfee, who gets just short yardage, if anything, as he gets right back near the line of scrimmage. Randy Beck is the man who made the stop. Randy Beck and Freddie Goodwin, and that's an outstanding defense for Jacksonville State. They have allowed less than 250 yards a ball game defensively. They have got good size up front, quick linebackers, and a great secondary. There are the numbers on Wally Henry. You can see what kind of year he's had. Nearly 2,200 yards for the veteran quarterback, and over the last two seasons, 3,000 yards through the air. He made second team all go South Conference. And the shotgun. Utah pass, good yardage up the middle as they get across to a pot of 45 down to about the 43 yard line as Nathaniel Bolton is the man who gets it. Freddie Goodwin is the man who makes the stop as they complete it. That's counted as a forward pass. Well, they ran a very interesting set there. They had Bolton come in motion, then he slowed down in the backfield, looked like he was blocking on the play, and a little shuffle pass. Right ahead, as you look at Bill Burgess in his fifth season at Jacksonville State, he's done an outstanding job with the Gamecocks, but he knows he's in for a tough ball game against a very fine Mississippi College offense, although you can see right there they have had a great deal of difficulty converting on third down. It's third and eight for Mississippi College, and they want a timeout. He had one second on the huddle clock. He had to call the timeout or lose the yardage, and you don't want to do that in a third and eight situation. Well, we have no score here in the first quarter of play. 11 minutes and 47 seconds to go. Mississippi College and Jacksonville State. Back in Florence, Alabama, this is Ralph Acker along with Jack Corrigan. It is third down and nine. The ball is on the Jacksonville State 39-yard line. Nathaniel Bolton is wide set to the left. Riley is to the right. And Wally Henry is the quarterback. Henry. The completed pass is not get the first down. They're going to be about a yard shy as Robert Taylor out of Long Beach, Mississippi comes up with his 42nd reception. And Yancey Dials makes the stop. They call him the best inside linebacker at Jacksonville. Well, that was a, just a very safe pass on the part of Wally Henry. Robert Taylor is the number two receiver on this team, just catching little passes like that. John Williams, no hesitation at all. On fourth and a, about a yard and a half, he's going to go for it. They need to get just across the 30-yard line. The ball is on the 31. Henry again, wide outs both ways. Henry on the pitch out. They fumble it. It's recovered by Jacksonville. It is fumbled and knocked away by Dials Yancey, recovered by William Bell, their free safety. Each team has fumbled. The other one has come up with it. Well, we are going to expect to see turnovers in this football game, one, because of the weather conditions, and two, because both these teams do an outstanding job of creating turnovers. Yancey Dials just stripped the ball away from Fred McAfee as he was gaining the first down yardage for the Choctaws. And Mississippi College, on the turnover, has to give the ball back to Jacksonville State. William Bell, the senior, free safety, coming up with the fumble recovery for the Gamecocks. Each team with one turnover. And their opening drives. Gulich, who was not only voted first team all conference, but the most valuable offensive player in the league, is at quarterback for Jacksonville. He to give up the middle, gets just about two yards as he gets it right back out at about the 30 yard line, where it'll be second down and two yard or eight yards to go as Roy Carpenter is the man who carries it. Carpenter, one of a number of players who played his high school football right here in the Shoals area. 
And to this point, uh, the return home has not been the most pleasing thing for Jacksonville State. They've struggled here in the early going. Kevin Blue, wide set to the right, out of the wishbone. It's a five-man front. Second down and eight. Billy on the pitch up. He gives it to Patrick. Patrick gets short yardage as he gets out now to about the 32, possibly the 33. And Brian Richardson out of Forest, Mississippi, makes the stop. It's the first time we saw Jacksonville State in the true wishbone alignment. They had been taking the halfbacks and actually lining them up ahead of the fullback. That time they were in the traditional wishbone set. And you got to give a lot of credit to Brian Richardson. The strong safety has to be able to come up and make that open field tackle on the pitch man if the defense is going to be successful. They give you Daryl Shaky Sanders wide to the left side. They have converted almost 40% of their third down conversions and trying to do so on third and seven with a man in motion. Gully, incomplete, under throwing it. And Jack, I suspect, will see a lot of that today with as hard as this ball is on this cold day here in northern Alabama. Give a little bit of credit, too, to Milton McGee, one of the tackles for Mississippi College. He was putting some pressure on Gulledge as he was trying to find Shaky Sanders, his wide receiver, for the first down. Instead, it'll be a punting situation for Jacksonville State. That's another area that the weather's going to be a factor. Hard to kick that football when it is ice cold. But Bailey is averaging a little over 40 yards a punt. This is Donnie Malloy along with James Green back in safety for Mississippi College. out of the barnyard trying to get him a spot to stand great snap it is taken and touched down right there by James Green so Mississippi College takes over for the second time this afternoon nine minutes 29 seconds left in the first quarter there's time out on the field with a score Mississippi College nothing Jacksonville State nothing in the championship this telecast is presented by the authority of the NCAA. Any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. It is first down and 10 for Mississippi College. A ball club that is coached by John Williams over there for 18 years. He's won 112 games and lost 76. They're 10 and 3 this year. Finished second to the team across the line for them. Jacksonville State in the Gulf South Classic. And they're playing for the national championship this afternoon. They're a ball club that will do a variety of things, and that time they gain one yard as Robert Taylor does it. Freddie Goodwin makes the stop. Robert Taylor is a 235-pound fullback, but he runs like he's a 175-pound scat back. He's the kind of ball carrier that likes to pick his way, and that was evidenced on that play as he tried to bunch, uh, punch his way around. There's a profile on John Williams, a gentleman without the cap on the sidelines. In his 33rd year of coaching football overall, 18 seasons at Mississippi College. Mississippi College is a Baptist college, of about 3,500 down in Clinton, Mississippi. It is incomplete. Nobody near it. The receiver going for the football had fallen down right at the top of your picture. Jack, they came out this morning when they still had the three and a half inches of snow on it and scraped it off. And I'm wondering if perhaps it didn't make it a little bit more ice on the field than there would have been without leaving it alone. No, I don't think, uh, based upon my years of experience in the snow up in Cleveland, with the warmer weather they've had during the week and the rain earlier in the week, the ground below it's still a lot warmer than the snow. So I don't think it made it really any more icy than you would expect. Third down and eight, they call it. Wide receivers, two on the left, one on the right. Henry, incomplete. They get back and nail him. He was throwing it to Nathaniel Bolton. They dropped him as Dar Darren Green, a defensive end, hit him just as he released the football. Well, with these kind of weather conditions, field position is certainly going to be a big factor. That early fumble by Jacksonville State that gave Mississippi College field position advantage, even though they've not been able to move the ball that well. They are doing it in the Jacksonville State end of the field. Not only does he quarterback, he punts. They just let him roll dead, and it will roll dead at about the 15-yard line. Wally Henry, who's averaging 41.6 yards a punt. They say he's too small to make it in the NFL as a quarterback, but he may be able to make it as a punter with a great punting average that he has. 
You can see that this is the second time that two schools from the same conference have played for the Division II title. The first one was the first time we staged the championship here in the Muscle Shoals area when North Dakota State and South Dakota battled for the title four years ago. They kept it on the ground all afternoon. Jacksonville State. David Gullig's number two. Man in motion with the give, trying to go up the middle. It's Roy Carpenter. Roy Carpenter trying to hit right up the middle and gets a half yard at the very, very most before Bruce Poole makes the stop. To be successful in the wishbone, you've got to take the nose man off the line of scrimmage. Boy, they triple team Terry Fleming here. Nate Hawkins, Keith Henderson, and Mike Allison, the only problem for Jacksonville State. Nobody blocked Milton McGee, and he made the stop right on the line of scrimmage. Carpenter has now carried the ball three times, has picked up a total of six yards. They give him no gain officially on the score clock, so it'll be second down and ten. He did gain about a half a yard in all actuality. But he gains more this time as he keeps on rambling out in the open field, and he may be on his way. It's a foot race, and he's caught from behind, but Baxter, and he brings him down. Darrell Braxton out of Philadelphia, Mississippi, had a good angle on him and caught him and brought him down after a great run. Well, this is just textbook wishbone attack you just keep going to the fullback going to the fullback and when the defense figures well now they've got to go outside you give it to the fullback one more time and Roy Carpenter with the first big play of the ball game when he slipped by the line of screen you could see that Mississippi College defense expecting the attack on the outside Daryl Backstrom the junior was able to run him down and save the touchdown he got 37 yards on that carry what a hole Nate Hawkins opened up on the left side of the line along with Keith Henderson to center. This time there is little there as they give it to Roy Carpenter for the fourth consecutive time and Milton McGee makes the stop. They have used Jacksonville State three fullbacks during the course of the season. Roy Carpenter, Brian Stevenson, and Terrence Bowens. The three have combined for over 1,200 yards on the ground. But here's the most significant factor, Ralph. The three of them have lost a total of seven yards on the season. Hey. With the weather conditions, does it play in favor of one team or the other, Jack? Well, it, I, I, it's hard to tell yet. I'm still trying to get a read on it. It depends a great deal on who they feel is getting the advantage on the line of scrimmage, the offensive line or the defensive line. They apparently are saying that Gu uh, that Gullage, as he pulled away from the quarter or from the center, slipped in his knee touch so it'll be a loss of a couple of yards really the significant factor right now for Mississippi College on the front line is just to hold the fort they don't have to penetrate just to get a stalemate on the line of scrimmage because the field will deny the Gamecocks the speed on the corners that's how cold it is down here oh no doubt it'll be third down and ten ball right back down the 42 no scores 604 to go first quarter of play Again, Gullich on the option of this, and they catch him for a big loss and bring him down back at about the 45 as Bruce Poole, the defensive end, comes back to make the sack. I've been very impressed with the perimeter people of Mississippi College here in the early going. They have shut down the wide portion of the Jacksonville State wishbone. Jacksonville State had the long run by Roy Carpenter, but other than that, the wishbone has been stymied. Bailey will punt it. His first punt went 25 yards. They put it out of the 44. Henderson, who is considered to be one of the best long snappers in Division II, gets it away and it partially blocked. They got a hand on that football, and it's touchdown inside about the 30-yard line. Chanel Conway came flying through and got a piece of the football. Five minutes, 16 seconds to go, and there's timeout on the field. The score, Mississippi College nothing, Jacksonville State nothing. Division two championship game, no score, first quarter of play. Mississippi College with their third offensive possession of the ball game. And they have it on the 29-yard line after a partially blocked punt by Conway. First down and 10. Wally Henry with three receivers wide to the right side. Count them, one, two, three, one behind the other. And he throws complete to Nathaniel Bolton, his leading receiver, the college's all-time leading receiver, and he's drugged down after a gain of about three yards. Eric Davis, the cornerback, gets him. Well, they want to get the football in the hands of Nathaniel Bolton in as many different ways as possible, but to this point, 
A very good job by Eddie Garfinkel, the defensive coordinator for Jacksonville State, in having enough people surround Bolton and deny him the opportunity to gain a lot of yardage. Second and seven, the ball on the 32. Right up the middle for a good short gain across the 35-yard line is Mitch Thames. He's carried for 337 yards, an average almost four and a half yards a carry coming into the game. Well, they like to spread you out and then go inside. This was a trap play, pretty good trap block put on by Jimmy Zilla, but stepping up nicely to fill the hole was Mark Lyles and make it about a third and, oh, let's call it a long four. And Zilla, the man about whom you just spoke, was named all-conference along with a group of others in both ball clubs. Dropping back for the first pass in the series. It is completed as Nathaniel Bolton to make it the second pass. It's first down, and he gets it out to the 45-yard line. Warren Butts makes the stop along with Eric Rutley. Again, you spread out the defense, set up the isolation situations, and all Bolton does is run underneath the linebackers who are dropping back into coverage, and then you let his athletic ability take over. He was a running back his first two years with Mississippi College. John Williams felt we've got to get this young man into situations where he can really dominate the game. The move to wide receiver has accomplished that. Bolton, along with McAfee, Thames coming in motion. It is to Bolton. Bolton will throw. The long pass. Did he overthrow his man? Yes. Just barely as he tried to hit Lewis Riley. Right between his arms. Nathaniel Bolton is also a quarterback. That is the fifth pass he has thrown this year. He's completed two of those. One of them for a touchdown. I tell you what, this was a heck of a throw. He has got Mark Lyles bearing down on him. He lets go a rocket. And Lewis Riley was behind the secondary. He just couldn't accelerate enough on the soft, snowy turf to get to the football. That's the kind of big play that John Williams was looking for. He goes at second down and 10 now. Those are the stats on Nathaniel Bolton. Wing right. The pitch out to the right side. This is Thames. He picked up good yardage a moment ago. Gets good yardage again, about five, as he's out near midfield. That is Mac or McAfee, they say, who gets out across midfield. As we come down to the final minutes of the first quarter again, I don't think we can emphasize enough, Ralph, the advantage of field position for Mississippi College by blocking a piece of that punt on Jacksonville State's last possession. They didn't lose the field position battle. They've been able to keep it around midfield or in Jacksonville State territory. And in a day or in a game when you're looking for breaks, you want field position. Henry with his ball caught, third down and four at the 50-yard line. And he can run it, but he does not get the first down as he just gets to the 49-yard line. That's going to be about two and a half yards shy. That is Cheeseburger Adams who makes the stop on him. Orlando Adams. And give a lot of credit to number 48, Rodney Kinney, the senior linebacker who was blitzing on the play. As a rule, Jacksonville State is not a stunting ball club. They blitzed that time, and it paid off. Wally Henry will do the punting. Nikki Edmondson is back in single safety. He's standing at about the 16-yard line. Henry gets this one away. Edmondson takes it at the 16. Little slip. Maybe to the 19 and no more. Well, it will go now to Jacksonville State. With a minute 52 seconds to go in the first quarter of play, we have another break in the action with a score nothing to nothing. That gentleman indeed does have the spirit of the season, does he not? With all the snow we received last night here in northern Alabama. Nothing, nothing. First quarter of play. A minute 52 to go. Jacksonville State with a football. Neither team able to move it on the other one, Jack Corrigan. Well, certainly the weather's been a factor in that regard, you see. Neither team's had much success on the ground for Jacksonville State. 35 of those 42 yards came on one play. 23 yard passing by Mississippi College. Nothing yet for Jacksonville. This is David Gellich trying to get to the outside and they spill him for a loss. Breaking through to get him. 
is Conway, and he's played a real fine ball game following the footsteps of his two older brothers there. Chanel Conway's two older brothers were all Gulf South Conference players. One is an attorney right now, and the other's in medical school, so pretty good family academically as well as athletically. He may have a lot to prove today because last year he made the first team all conference, and he didn't make it this year on first or second team, and maybe a little upset about that. A loss of two. to go on the clock and second down and 12. This is Carpenter right up the middle. Again, let's take a look at the line play. This is Milton McGee, number 90, paired up with Mike Allison. And Allison is considered the best drive blocker for Jacksonville State. And that was a pretty good example. Allison replacing a two-time All-American Joe Billingsley at right guard for the Gamecocks. Well, that was just excellent drive blocking on that play, but they were clogged up and got only short yardage. Carpenter's carried six times for 48 yards. His longest was 37 yards. Right up the middle, there you go again. Roy Carpenter, the work off of the afternoon. And again, Terry Fleming, their All-American candidate, makes the stop on him with 20 seconds left. What a hit by Terry Fleming. Carpenter looked like he was getting up ahead of steam, and then he ran into Fleming, and it was case dismissed. I mean, it was over. Do you think he's looking at the ball game or just trying to stay warm? Steve Bailey will punt it. His third punt of the afternoon. Green and Malloy are back, but the first quarter has just come to an end. At the end of the first quarter, we've got no score. Jacksonville State nothing. Mississippi College nothing. We'll be right back after these messages. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. Power of Penn State's Blair Thomas and the rifle arm of BYU's Ty Detmer could set off an offensive explosion at the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. Part of Bowl Week, Friday, December 29th, live on ESPN. Neither team has crossed the goal line after one period here in Brawley Stadium. We'd like to present the Armed Forces Student Athlete of the Game. Today's student athletes are brought to you by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. From Mississippi College, Wally Henry, a senior quarterback, has a 3.4 grade point average in business. And from Jacksonville State, Jeff Williams, a junior offensive tactile, has a 3.42 grade point average in computer science. Today's Armed Forces Student Athletes of the Game. Period number two, getting ready to start. Jacksonville State getting ready to punt. Steve Bailey, for the third time this afternoon, will punt it. Donnie Malloy and James Green are back. Malloy, he's at the 50. He's still coming this way. 45, 35, 30. Slipping down at about the 28-yard line. If we read the yardage markers right in the snow. Darrell Malone hitting chest high and gets credit for the tackle. Both these teams have excellent special squad work. Watch Donnie Malloy dance and stutter his way around in the sand, in the snow and the sand that was put down earlier in the week to try and pick up some of the moisture from the rain and he finally lost his footing thanks to the snow and Daryl Malone but great situation for Mississippi College a great one for a ball club that likes to put the ball in the air from the shotgun Lewis Riley is in motion the handoff goes to Fred McAfee the halfback and McAfee does not make the line of scrimmage his flags go down he lost two yards Reginald James a linebacker made the stop We'll check the flag, flipping against Jacksonville State. So the great field position they had is now offset. Mitch Thames, the fullback, trying to help out McAfee on a play that was in trouble from the get-go is the guilty party. And instead of it being second and long at the 30-yard line, it could be first and 25 out near midfield. First quarter numbers, you can see that not a whole lot has happened for either team, almost dead even, a four-yard differential, and that equals what we have had on the scoreboard 
no points thus far. Jacksonville State dominating the clock, but with the exception of the one long run by Roy Carpenter, their wishbone attack has been shut down. It is now first down, 25. The ball on the 43-yard line. Jacksonville State in the red. Mississippi College with a football. The give goes up the middle for short yardage as they get it down to about the 40-yard line. Mitch Thames carrying once again. That'll be his second carry of the afternoon. Picking up seven yards. Here's Randy Back, one of the defensive linemen, meeting up with Malcolm Houston, the tight end. Beck does a good job of fighting off the block and being a part of the crowd, headed up by John Sanders, sophomore out of Atlanta, Georgia. They call Sanders Foots because he wears size 16 shoes. Been tall if he hadn't turned down so much for foot, huh? The ball is on the 40-yard line, second down at 22. Bolton goes in motion to the left. They look for him, and they throw to the left-hand side. But instead, it's to Riley, and Riley has got down to about the 20-yard line. 25-yard line make it. They ran Lewis Riley on a deep curl route to the outside while Bolton went up the middle of the field. This is an excellent catch under adverse conditions. Look at this ball coming right at you. Riley wearing those receiver's gloves now, and what a difference that has made for receivers in football. I tell you, Ralph, if they had those when I played, I would have caught about 15 more balls during the season. They're, they're great. They're better than stick them. Well, I have heard you use every excuse for you being a better receiver than you were up in the Ivy League. Third down and eight. The ball is at the 26-yard line. From the shotgun again, they call a timeout. 12 minutes and 52 seconds to go. First half of play. We've got a timeout on a snow-covered field with a score. Jacksonville State, nothing. Mississippi College, nothing. Twelve fifty-two to go. First half of play. Mississippi College with the ball. Third down and eight. The ball is on the 26-yard line. Third down conversions today, 0 for 3 Bolton and Riley, wide set to the right from the shotgun. This is Henry. To the end zone, intercepted and dropped. It was into the hands of Eric Davis. Davis just couldn't hold on to it. Wally Henry trying to go deep to Nathaniel Bolton. It was a sight adjustment, being that Bolton had to make a read on the cornerback and react accordingly. He broke to the post. Henry read it to the flag, and the closest guy was Eric Davis, who has already picked off six passes this year. This would have been number seven, but he just couldn't hang on to it in the snow of the end zone. We've got an injured player, Jimmy Zilla, back up field. He was trying to protect for Wally Henry. Jack, if... Davis had had the old trick you used to use when you were a receiver, <laughs> like the thumbtacks inside your gloves. Could oh, you hold on to the football? You, 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 you mean that I used thumbtacks? Well, you're letting out my secret, Ralph, you what? know? Only on a day like today. It was very easy. You'd, sit, you'd put the thumbtack and, and wrap a little tape so just enough of the point would show through to slow the ball down, but uh, not enough for uh, the officials to detect, and it worked out pretty well. Well, maybe Eric Davis will do that. John Williams, who's 4-2 in playoff football games, all at Mississippi College for the Choctaws. And there is Jimmy Zyla, an accounting major, all-conference player. They say he is the leader along that offensive line. He can fire everybody up. They bring him out, and now Brandon Creel goes in, along with Nelson Bonanot for Mississippi College. It is fourth down and eight. They're going to go for it. And the 26, it is completed up in the air, it is intercepted. It is Nathaniel Bolton who had it, flipped it up in the air, wanting one of his players to run under it, and Mississippi College turns it over to Reginald James. Is that a planned play, Jack? Without question, that was the old flea flicker right there. Bolton breaking across. He knows he's not the first down yardage. He wants to get the ball and flip it back. And unfortunately for Mississippi College, he got hit as he tried to throw the lateral to Fred McAfee, and the ball went straight up and down, and the Gamecocks come away with it. They do indeed at the 17-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go now. Razzle-dazzle early on of this game. 12.35 to go, first half of play. <laughs> David Gullich, Bell City, Alabama. Yeah. At the throttle. 
give goes up the middle again to Roy Carpenter. And this workhorse is carried for the eighth time today. And he carries for short yardage. Getting it out to the 20 yard line, a gain of about three. In a wishbone attack, you've got to get the surge on the line of scrimmage. And again, they do a great job on Terry Fleming. The problem has been for that wishbone, the perimeter men on the line of scrimmage for the Mississippi College defense have been handling the tackles of Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State changing and putting Alan Dawson to the replacing Keith Henderson to find center. This is Gullage on the run, gets the first down, and he's out of bounds. Bill Burgess talked about how well David Gullage reads the defense, and that's the key for a wishbone quarterback. They get a good block on the corner after the play fake here to Carpenter. They get an excellent block on Bruce Poole, the defensive end, and that enabled Gullage to turn the corner before he was run out of bounds, but not before he gets it out over the 30-yard line. Gullage picked up 13 yards. He's now gained 665 yards in his junior season at Jacksonville State. First down and 10, Daryl Sanders wide to the left side, wishbone behind Gullich. Carpenter going up the middle, short yardage again, perhaps two as he gets it out to about the 36-yard line. Well, a wishbone attack, particularly on a less than fast track, is not going to be the most interesting offense to watch, but it can be effective if you hang on to the football. And since that early fumble, they've been able to do that. They keep pounding at you up the middle with the fullback, hoping they can pop one once in a while, and then turn the corner when you concentrate so much on the middle. A wishbone is a very popular offense, or has been over the years in the state of Alabama. The University of Alabama running it for a few years, Auburn running it for a while, and now Jacksonville State and the fumble. It will be recovered by Mississippi College. I think they do. Mississippi College comes up with a football, the third fumble of the day. Bruce Poole apparently is the man who came up with it. Well, again, the play was started by good penetration from the defensive line, and then it was a situation, would they fall on the football before they slid out of bounds? So field position remains advantage Mississippi College. And the turnovers are dead even at two and two. First down 10, Mississippi College. The give to Robert Taylor off tackle, short yardage inside the 35 yard line to about the 33. It'll be second down and seven. Taylor coming into the ball game and carried for an average of 4.3 and five touchdowns. Well, there's a great crowd here this afternoon despite the inclement weather. I bet we have about 10,000 people here. The quarterback is Nathaniel Bolton. He has been at uh, wide receiver. They had taken Henry out of the ball game and Bolton they had moved Henry to wide receiver yeah. and put Bolton at quarterback to run the option. They feel that Bolton is stronger as an option quarterback than Henry is. Good recognition of it, however, by the Jacksonville State defense. If, if they've been able to, excuse me, Ralph, if they've been able to shut down Jacksonville State's wishbone, the Gamecocks have been able to keep Nathaniel Bolton from breaking a big play. There's the Gamecock. A moment ago, he was throwing snowballs. Now he's passing out tissue for runny noses. Third down and nine. 9.53 left. And now they want timeout as they move Wally Henry back over to the quarterback spot. So we've got a timeout on the field as Henry comes to the sideline to talk to his coach, John Williams. There's no score in the first half of play. Well, the snow has certainly changed the complexion of this ball game that we thought we'd see at least three touchdowns scored by one of the two teams if not by both of them with 947 to go Jack it's nothing nothing well they're slugging it out around midfield and really the situation now is from Jacksonville State's point of view Ralph they have been stuck in their end of the field throughout this first half but have been able to keep Mississippi College off of the scoreboard so they've got to feel like even though it's been tough they're hanging in there Carpenter is 61 of those yards. Bolton is wide to the right. McAfee is in motion. They hand the football into Taylor. That is actually a forward pass. 
As he tried the Utah again, they get short yardage out of it of about five, getting it to around the 30-yard line. Second time they've run that little shovel pass. Taylor, the blocking back, just tries to slip in front, but good recognition of the play defensively for Jacksonville State by Jimmy Hall, the defensive end, and never allowed Taylor to get going. And Henry will have to punt it again. He's had two punts already. Eric Davis is back in single safety at about the 10. He boots it over the head, and it's going to get near the end zone, and it is just in the end zone, as you see. They made a great effort to get back there and try to slap the football down. So the football will be turned over now to Jacksonville State out of the 20-yard line, first down and 10, Jack Corrigan. Well, there are some of the Mississippi College cheerleaders, and while the football team is battling for a national championship today, the cheerleaders have already won one. We have to congratulate the Choctaw cheerleaders. They are the Division II national champions in the most recent cheerleading competition. We're happy to be back here today in Brawley Stadium. As you see the turnovers in the championship games. Ronnie Pinnell, again our spotter. John Moody is our statistician, as always, here in Lawrence, Alabama. Good defense by Mississippi College that swatted that play away as they get it to Ralph Johnson, the running back. He's out of Rome, Georgia, and Bachman makes a stop on it. Excellent defense. They wanted to run the play action and throw the ball to Daryl Sanders, their wide receiver, but he was covered. He had Johnson as his safety valve, but there was good pressure on Johnson as well. And virtually no gain on the play. David Gulledge is one out of two through the air today. Gulledge is 48 of 97 coming into the game for 837 yards and four touchdowns. He's also throwing four interceptions. Right at the belly and pulling it back away, but a loss of about one. They smell that one out, and James Green, the cornerback, made the stop. But credit Chanel Conway, number 24 again, with breaking up the play. If there has been a dominant player in the ball game thus far defensively for Mississippi College, it's been the junior linebacker, Chanel Conway. He has constantly disrupted the outside portion of the wishbone attack of Jacksonville State. Jacksonville 0 for 4 and third down conversions. They have that now. Third down and 11. 741 to go. First half. Make it 0 for 5. A loss as they give it to Steve Patrick and they spill it. Milton McGee with great recognition from his defensive tackle spot. McGee, who has sacked the quarterback 11 times this year. Thought that was just like sacking a quarterback. That receiver was deep enough in the backfield, and he dropped him. And again, Ralph, I can't stress enough, this field position advantage means so much when you're trying to defend against a wishbone team. It's going to be very difficult for Jacksonville State to make a long drive under these conditions. So it's been advantage Mississippi College. Steve Bailey, his fourth punt of the day. Donnie Malloy back to receive this one. Another low liner that backs him up. He takes it at about the 43. 45, popped up in the air. Mississippi College comes back with it. Brian Richardson made the hit. Stops him down at about the 45-yard line. Six minutes, 44 seconds to go. First half of play, and there's time out on the field. With a score, Mississippi College nothing, Jacksonville State. Ralph Acker along with Jack Corrigan here in Brawley Stadium in Florence, Alabama. The national championship game. No score the first half of play. Mississippi College against Jacksonville State. There will be a champion in this ballgame, Jack. That's right. We will go to an overtime playoff procedure if this game stays tied after regulation time. That's a long way off. We're still in the first half of play. Four-man butt put up by Jacksonville State. A reverse as he gives it to Nathaniel Bolton. He looks plenty of time, fires downfield. It is complete at about the 10-yard line. That is Houston who makes the stop. They're a big play team, and Nathaniel Bolton is usually involved in the big play, this time as the thrower. 
on the double reverse. Bolton stops, looks for his tight end, Malcolm Houston. This is only the 12th ball that Houston has caught all year. He made a nice catch and did a good job of screening the ball from Willie Hutchinson, the, re the defender on the play. First down just outside the 10-yard line. Best scoring threat yet. Nathaniel Bolton is one of 20 children. He had two sisters play at the University of Auburn. A fumble. But I think the Thames recovered his own fumble inside the 10 at about the nine yard line. What a break for Mississippi College after getting down there. Thames would have really felt terrible had he given the ball back to Jacksonville State. Fortunately, that ball didn't go very far. One thing about a field like this, Ralph, the ball will not bounce around a lot. When it hits the ground, that's where it's gonna stay. It doesn't bounce too much on the soft turf this afternoon. 5.49 to go. First half of play and no score. Mississippi College on the 10, second and nine. Up the middle. Henry getting it to about the six-yard line. Now, obviously, they can get a first down without getting a score. That was Diles who made the stop for Jacksonville. Running the quarterback draw, that's not something you would expect out of Wally Henry. Pretty good play call that time by Terry McMillan, the offensive coordinator for the Choctaws. But you're right, they can get a first down inside the two-yard line, just outside the one. And right now, the ball in the middle of the field, they are certainly in a decent spot to try a field goal from Robert Jenkins, the freshman field goal kicker. Who's a fine kicker. But they want six here, Ralph. Definitely. Henry throwing for the end zone. There's nobody there. His intended receiver, Lewis Riley, was double-teamed over on the right side and just couldn't get away. Freddie Goodwin and Eric Davis, the linebacker and cornerback, had him pretty well covered. They were trying to run the fade route to Riley in the corner. He is 6'4 and certainly would have the size advantage, but he was not able to get off the line of scrimmage, and Henry's pass sailed harmlessly away. We are going to get a field goal try, but it is going to be from Shane Stewart rather than Robert Jenkins. Shane Stewart will try it. It's blocked. Jacksonville blocks it. Eric Davis picks it up and takes the ball out to about the 45, make it the 44-yard line. What a play. The Gamecocks have done a great job all year blocking kicks. They do it again and stop the best scoring threat of the afternoon. Jacksonville takes over the football with a timeout of the field and no score. There's no score first half of play and Jacksonville has taken it over after this block. <laughs> Shane Stewart trying for the field goal try and it was Tracy Allen, the linebacker, who came storming up through the middle to block the kick and then Eric Davis was trying to take it coast to coast but Robert Taylor got a piece on him to stop him but Jacksonville State with another block twice this year Ralph Jacksonville State has blocked extra points and run the ball the length of the field for a two-point conversion in college football if you block an extra point and if the defense can run it to the other end zone you get the two points you saw Davis looking also to lateral that thing away as he was being drug down first down and ten now the momentum may have swung over to Jacksonville State. 446 left. They run from the wishbone. They pitch it back over to Patrick. Patrick swinging wide. Gets short yardage up about the 47-yard line where Backstrom makes the stop. What a hit by Daryl Backstrom on Steve Patrick. And they're taking a look at Steve on the sidelines, making sure that his eyes are not going in opposite directions. That was a great open field tackle by Daryl Baxter. Against the wishbone, your exterior people have got to be able to make good tackles in the open field. You won't find a much better than this pop right there. Boom. It'll be second down and six after a gain of four. Wide out to the right side. On the option again, they pitch it to Ryan to the right. That's Johnson. Johnson getting close to the first down as he gets across midfield to about the 46-yard line, and Richardson brings him down, along with Roderick McGee. As Ralph Johnson carried the football, Sean Johnson, the right halfback in the wishbone, did an excellent job blocking 
on the perimeter, on the corner for Jacksonville State to enable Ralph Johnson to turn the corner. You could see Ricky Herzog, one of the coaches, the defensive coordinator for Mississippi College, yelling out to his ball club. They stretch it out to see whether or not they had the first down on the second and sixth ball, and you see that it was well more than enough. John Williams, the head coach of Mississippi College, Choctaws. That's only the second first down they've been able to put together. Only the second time they have been in Mississippi College territory. The other one coming on the long run by Roy Carpenter. 345 left, first half. Wide out to the right side. That's Ralph Johnson. Man in motion, but Carpenter gets the ball and gets about four yards as he rambles on down to around the 41-yard line. Terry Fleming, the All-American nose man for Mississippi College, slips off the block of Keith Henderson here, but just can't quite reach the fullback, Roy Carpenter, as he was able to slice outside for almost five yards. Most of the half was played in the Jacksonville State end, but the Gamecocks with a chance to take the lead going into the locker room in the final three minutes of the first half. No score, first half of play. Again, Carpenter up in the middle across the 40 to about the 38-yard line, not enough for the first down. A flag is down in all that snow. And we've got a holding call against the Gamecocks. A costly penalty here as they started to move themselves down the field and get into position to try and get a touchdown or a field goal. The 10 yard penalty will back them up back over the 40 again and out near midfield. And in fact, where they spot the ball, it's back into Gamecock territory at the 48 yard line. Puts it out at about the 48-yard line, as a matter of fact, across midfield. It'll be second down and 15. That's our producer, John Crow, who stepped out of the truck. <laughs> Two minutes, 44 seconds to go. The clock runs. Two penalties. Two penalties for 20 yards and one for 10. They throw incomplete as they try to hit Steve Patrick down the right side. If he had caught it, Brian Richardson would have met him head on and stopped him in his tracks. Instead, he goes back at third and 15. Richardson's been an impressive player, the redshirt freshman out of Forest, Mississippi. Seven interceptions on the year and four fumbles. As you look at Bill Burgess, the Jacksonville State coach, John Williams said of Richardson, he's one of those guys that just happens to be around where the football is. You don't know how he gets there sometimes, but he's always there. Jacksonville State has yet to convert a third down and five different occasions. Gully make it six different occasions as they lose more yardage, lose five as a matter of fact, and for the second time, it is Bruce Poole who does the duty. Well, these are two good defenses. Jacksonville State giving up 245 yards of ball game. Not much difference with Mississippi College, just over 250 yards of ball game. Steve Bailey will punt once again. Donnie Malloy is back to receive. Mississippi College has used all three of its timeouts, so they're going to be hard pressed to try and mount something with under two minutes to go here in the first half. And it slipped a little bit, but he took, took an extra step and booted it, and the ball's down at about the 21. And it'll be Malloy who wrapped it up. Did he slip a little bit out there, Jack? It looked like he wasn't really sure what he wanted to do, and then Bobby Hathorne for Mississippi College thought he could pick that ball off on a line and maybe get some running yardage, and the ball went through his hands, but fortunately, Donnie Malloy was able to fall on it for the chuck toss. Well, a minute 42 to go. The ball is at the 21-yard line. Now, if I was John Williams, I'd try and run the clock out here, but let's see if Bill Burgess uses his timeouts to try and save some of that time. Wally, they call him the Coach Henry because he has been there six years, actually five years and one semester, gives it to McAfee, who gets short yardage out to the 24 before Darren Green makes the stop. Well, to this point, 
Jacksonville State's going to let the clock run. We're down to 125, as you see, and they have yet to start the huddle clock. So Mississippi College can wait until there's less than a minute to go before making the second down snap. Jack, why don't you explain to us how Wally Henry has stayed there almost six years, or in his sixth year? I don't know if I've got enough time to do that. We'll try and get to that. A minute, five seconds to go, first half of play. It is indeed a long story. A fake reverse. They get out to the 25-yard line. This is McAfee. Not quite enough for the first down as they stop him just shy of the 30-yard line. Mark Lyles made the stop and kept him in bounds. He stays in bounds, so the clock keeps running. They fake the reverse this time as McAfee keeps the football after faking it to Bolton. Comes out near first down yardage and does stay in bounds to keep the clock running. And since Mississippi College will have the football to start the second half, I think they're going to be pretty content here to take as much time off the clock here. And if they have to put on fourth down, there won't be any time left for Jacksonville State. They had won the opening toss and deferred their choice until the second half of play. Again, just running it out up the middle, getting the first down as they get out across the 30-yard line is Robert Taylor. Stop the clock to reset the chains. Well, John Williams telling you everything right here. He's already, he, he's heading to the locker room. He's saying, we're just going to sit on the ball, gentlemen. Let those last 10 seconds tick away because we're going to get the football. Let's not do anything foolish here. Well, they've at least got, there they go. Let the clock start and run down. That's the end of the first half. And the 30 minutes of football in the national championship game for Division II, it is Mississippi State College Choctaws nothing. The Jacksonville State Gamecocks nothing. We'll be back with our halftime activities right after these messages. Well, it is nothing to nothing Jacksonville State and Mississippi College, and we are at halftime here at the Division II football championship game at Brawley Stadium in Florence, Alabama. A cold, cold day, but the fans are reacting very well to it. The football team kind of changing their methods of play this afternoon, Jack. Well, we thought before the ball game, Ralph, that the, the weather conditions being a dry day, but a very soft uh, turf and very cold temperatures would probably be to the advantage of Mississippi College, that it would be much tougher to grind it out way up the field for a wishbone offense. And certainly to that point, that's been the case. Mississippi College has had the best scoring opportunities in the ball game. In fact, they got it down inside the Jacksonville mm -hmm. State 10-yard line, but the block field goal by the Gamecocks keeps it at a scoreless ball game. Which has really been the only scoring threat that we've had in this game, and they had come up with it in great field position and just marched it down there. Changed field goal kickers. We're going to check and see why they did that. Well, Stewart is the more veteran kicker. They had gone to the freshman Jenkins during the course of the season. He had done a good job. They decided to go to Stewart on the field goal try. I don't think it would have made any difference who was kicking because it was great penetration by the Gamecock defense in order to block that field goal. And at this particular point we've unable to see any passing attack unleashed by Mississippi College and that's what they like to do with the football they've had a few opportunities to throw the football they get the one long pass on the reverse by Bolton to Malcolm Houston their tight end but for the most part uh, Jacksonville State has kept Bolton in front of them and uh, kept Nathaniel from breaking a big play but the field position advantage has gone to Mississippi College through the first half, and, and that's why, even though they haven't scored, they've been the more dominant team. Well, Jacksonville State not only has a fine football team that finished first in the Gulf South Classic, let's go down to the field right now, and the Jacksonville Band.
that's the Jacksonville State Band on the field. And now here's a look at the campus of Mississippi College in Clinton, Mississippi. The early settlers to the lower Mississippi Valley realized that education and Christian values were necessary to the development of the country. These two values led to the establishment of Mississippi College in 1826. Mississippi College is the oldest four-year institution of higher learning in the state. And during its 163 years of existence, Mississippi College has graduated leaders in the medical field, chemical field, and the aerospace industry. Mississippi College is located in Clinton, Mississippi, and offers majors in 45 areas. Campus life is characterized by involvement with activities that allow for individual and academic development. Regularly pre-med graduates are accepted to med school at a percent higher than the national average. Law and nursing students also enjoy successful exam passage rates. Mississippi College, Clinton, Mississippi, a part of our heritage, still making history. Halftime here in Florence, Alabama in the Division II Championship game. The Mississippi College Choctaws and the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State are scoreless. It's our pleasure at this time at halftime to talk with the president of Mississippi College, Dr. Lewis Nobles. Dr. Nobles, you've been president of your fine institution for more than 20 years. I'm sure you have to be very proud of uh, the great effort by the football program this year to get to the championship game. Yes, indeed, Jack. We're certainly very proud of it. There is a, a, an outstanding tradition to Mississippi College academically as well as athletically. Second oldest Baptist school in the country and uh, quite a few things to be proud of on your campus. Yes, the second oldest Baptist institution, the first oldest uh, four-year degree granting institution in the state of Mississippi. Uh, we've been around a long time. Uh, it was chartered just nine years after Mississippi became a state in the Union, so we've been there a long time and we're proud of it. During your tenure, and you've been there over 20 years, Dr. Nobles, you've had uh, uh, a law school uh, now become part of Mississippi College. You have a fine school of nursing as well. Uh, what are the things we can expect out of your institution as you move into the 90s? Uh, certainly we don't have a very specific formula is what we'll be doing next. We have a number of things on the back burner and just as so many cases in independent institutions, uh, when the money becomes available, the priorities may shift, but we certainly have certainly th certain things in mind and we look forward to the continuing growth and expansion of the institution. Well, Dr. Nobles, it's been a good first half for your ball club. Congratulations on getting here. Best of luck to you in the future. We are at halftime here in the Division II NCAA Championship game. No score in the ball game between Mississippi College and Jacksonville State. Let's pause now for a message from the NCAA. For the third consecutive year, Texas A&I running back Johnny Bailey placed his name with the Harlan Hill Trophy Friday night as the NCAA Division II College Football Player of the Year. Bailey, who closed his career as the all-time leader in rushing and all-purpose yardage in collegiate history, dominated voting by the Division Sports Information Directors for the fourth annual award. Bailey, a senior from Houston, Texas, and a two-time Harlan Hill Trophy winner, rushed for 6,320 yards, smashing Tony Dorsett's mark of 6,038. His 7,000-plus all-purpose yards passed Colgate's Kenny Gamble, and the 428 points he scored during his career ranks as the third highest total in collegiate history. He set more than 50 NCAA rushing, scoring, and all-purpose yardage records during his career. In addition to his three Hill Awards, Bailey has been named to the first team of every small college football team all four years. Johnny Bailey, the 1989 Harlan Hill Trophy winner. No score here at halftime on a chilly, snowy afternoon in Florence, Alabama for the Division II football championship, Mississippi College and Jacksonville State University. And while we've got the opportunity here, let's visit the campus of Jacksonville State, located in Jacksonville, Alabama. Jacksonville State University, Northeast Alabama state-supported coeducational institution providing programs at the undergraduate and graduate levels. With a current enrollment of over 8,000 students, JSU offers quality educational and career-oriented programs at a reasonable cost. The Gamecock athletic tradition a multitude of student activities, and excellence in academics. It's Jacksonville State University, the friendliest campus in the South. 
Back up here in the press box area at halftime. Now our pleasure to talk with the president of Jacksonville State University, Dr. Harold McGee. And Dr. McGee, obviously uh, you'd like to see your ball club on top, but considering all that went on, you'll take the scoreless tie yeah, at halftime. Like getting all over again. We'll start one more time. The 1980s have certainly been a fine decade athletically, particularly last year as you had a number of teams in the national championship competition. I'm sure you'd like to end the decade with a football title. It's been a strong heritage. In 89, we've been in the final four in basketball, World Series, now the football finals. So we hope the third's a charm. Certainly, as we saw in the brief uh, visit to your campus, a, a fine academic institution as well. I'll, I'll pose the same question to you that I did to uh, Dr. Nobles. As you head into the 90s, what can we expect from Jacksonville State? Well, we're a traditional regional state university. Our mission is instruction and public service. What about for this uh, football team in the second half? I know in addition to all your academic duties, you're a pretty hardcore football fan. Uh, Coach Burgess going to be able to get it together in the yeah, second half? second half team all year, and we think we'll come through. Well, Doctor, we appreciate you stopping by Thank and visiting with us, and uh, best of luck to you. We appreciate your support. Thank you. All right, Dr. Harold McGee, the president of Jacksonville State University. Let's now join the Pride of Dixie Band from the University of North Alabama under the direction of Dr. Ed Jones. Pride of Dixie Band from the University of North Alabama. We're at halftime of the NCAA Division II Championship game with no score. Let's now pause for this message. There is no score, and we're at halftime of the Division II Football Championship game here in the Shoals area of North Alabama. Mississippi College against Jacksonville State. And that's the kind of day it has been. Three and a half inches of snow arriving. The temperature is dropping now. And 24 degrees chill factor as we started. The big highlight of this first half of play was after Mississippi College had marched down to the six yard line and attempted this field goal. Shane Stewart trying the field goal and coming through to block it right up the middle was number 30, Tracy Allen. And for a moment it appeared that Jacksonville State was going to convert it into a big play as Eric Davis came up with the ball. Robert Taylor stopping the touchdown try and basically that ended the scoring opportunity of the first half. It was a first half dominated in terms of field position by Mississippi College, but not much else. It's been give and take, but no break here in the first half. We're at halftime of the NCAA Division II Championship game with no score. Mississippi College and Jacksonville State will return in the second half. A surging Clemson Tiger attack digs in for a major challenge. Major Harris leads West Virginia against Clemson at the Mazda Gator Bowl. Part of Bowl Week, Saturday, December 30th at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. It's the 1989 NCAA Division II Football Championship game. Brought to you by Rawlings Sporting Goods Company, maker of the official ball of the 1989 NCAA Football Championships. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, where opportunity is waiting for you.
We have played 30 minutes and have no score between Mississippi College and Jacksonville State in the championship game. On a snowy field, as you would expect, not a whole lot of offense. Mississippi College dominating field position, and they have the advantage in total yards, 120 to 73. The biggest factor up there, Jacksonville State minus five in the passing department. The kind of day where you're not going to be able to grind it down the field, and Jacksonville State's going to have to be able to throw the football with a little bit of success if they're going to mount some kind of scoring threat this afternoon. Mississippi College will get the football to start the second half with what breeze we have at their back. Stennett will kick off for Jacksonville State. It is Herzog and McAfee back in dual safety to receive it. We're ready to go with half number two in the championship game and no score. A wobbly kick and the short up man takes it. They finally pile up and get him after a short game. That'll be Jimmy Hall, who's normally a defensive end, who got the football. Well, that's one way to protect yourself from the cold. <laughs> wow. Certainly a day that not everybody expected down here. They tell us, Ralph, that while they've had snow in November and December, this is the first time they've ever had a game here at this stadium with snow on the ground. Mississippi College a little late in getting a player out, but they finally get Kevin Bayard in at one of the wideouts. Right up the middle, again, short yardage starting from the 32 and get it out to about the 35-yard line. That is McAfee carrying. That'll be his sixth carry of the afternoon. He's picked up 19 yards. There's a game cut. Mississippi College did not go to their tailback that much. Fred McAfee in the first half, he gained over 1,100 yards. John Williams says we're not really a power offensive line. They graduated a lot of people last year, so it's a young group up front. They've not been able to really blow people off the ball. Henry with the eye behind him. He gets a good block. He's going to need another one. He throws incomplete. He was throwing to Lewis Wiley, his end. They had great pressure being put on him by Randy Beck, number 39, the defensive end for Jacksonville State. Well, Randy Beck was the leading sacker on the year for Jacksonville State with seven quarterback sacks, and he put the pressure on Henry, but also gives some credit to the secondary coverage downfield because they just did not allow Henry any place to throw the football. You can see... Mississippi College, a real balanced offense. While Jacksonville State, as you would expect out of the wishbone, a dominant running team. Bolton and Riley are wideouts. Henry from the shotgun. Third and seven. It is complete. First down over to Nathaniel Bolton. Bolton. A step out of bounds after he picked up the first down. Well, this is a play that could have gone either way. It looked for a second like Daryl Malone might pick this ball off and be gone for a touchdown. Boy, Wally Henry got it right in there, and Bolton, had he been able to stay in bounds after being shoved by William Bell, would have scored, but Bell saved the touchdown. Henry with a good completion to Nathaniel Bolton down near the 40-yard line of Jacksonville State. Great camera work to pick up that one foot going out of bounds on the other side. We played under a minute in the second half, and Mississippi College is moving the football. Henry with wide ups again. The dip goes up the middle. They get short yardage as they grind it out with Robert Taylor. With these conditions, Ralph, if Mississippi College scores first and scores a touchdown, they are almost going to force Jacksonville State to get out of what they like to do because one touchdown might be enough in this football game. And John Williams, I'm sure, talked to his club, said, hey, we've got to come out on that first possession and try and stick it in the end zone. I love that shot of Taylor coming back to the hub, knocking the snow out of his helmet. He has grounded into the ground. A minute and a half to go on here in the second half. Henry airing it out. Bolton is down there, incomplete. Well overthrew him. William Bell, the free safety, was back to defend him. A good double coverage on Bolton as he was trying to run a post route. Daryl Malone, the cornerback, was helping out with William Bell, the free safety. Sets up that third and medium distance. Watch the play. Oh, there's a great shot. 
That tells it all. They don't build many snowmen or women in Alabama. I got to tell you, you know, Jacksonville State wouldn't expect snow. Neither would Mississippi College. They're further south than this, yet they had about four inches of snow overnight in Jackson, Mississippi, near where Mississippi College is. Henry from the shotgun. Just runs out of bounds. He did not get back to the line of scrimmage. Rodney Scott is the man who ran him out on a third down and six call. So they're going to have to punt it away. Pretty heads up play by Wally Henry, and I tell you why it was, even though he took that loss. One of his linemen, Trey Summers, was downfield. If he would have thrown that football, they would have had an ineligible player downfield and would have been backed up even further. Edmonton is back. Henry will punt it. Fourth time today that he has had to punt. Punts it from the 39 yard line. They signal fair catch and get it. They get it at about the 14 yard line. So from the 14 yard line, they will get it. First down to 10. With time out on the field, your score is nothing, nothing. Mississippi State, Jacksonville State. Nothing, nothing with the ball on the 13-yard line. Let's call it for Jacksonville State. And you can see Jacksonville State, with the exception of two possessions, they have been backed up deep in their own territory throughout this football game. And they start deep in their own territory again on their own 13-yard line. The temperature has dropped as the afternoon has grown late. They played a minute 54 in the second half play and no score. Each team lets the other one have one good drive and then they shut him down as they pitch it back over to Patrick and Patrick is still right at the line of scrimmage. Patrick is running with the ball dropped the football and they were lucky that he was able to find the handle again. Watch this. Patrick has got some running room out there and as he tries to put the ball away he need it right out of his grasp and he slipped there. He was very lucky that he got to the ball before who else? Brian Richardson got there. Richardson, as John Williams told us, is always around the football. Second down, 11, a loss of one. David Gump, the Offensive Player of the Year in the Gulf South Conference. These two teams met earlier in the year, and Jacksonville State won it, but through a bizarre series of incidents, they won it early on in the ball game when there were some turnovers occurred. Pretty good line search this time by the Jacksonville State offensive line. They create a good seam on the backside. They give a lot of credit to Bruce Poole, who worked his way back on the play from his defensive end spot to chop down the ball carrier before he could get much yardage. Third and long. And we have not seen thus far this afternoon Jacksonville State being able to do much in long yardage situations. They are 0 for 5, I think, in third down conversions. It is third and seven right now. The wishbone with a wide up. Gullich. The pitch back goes over to Johnson. John Johnson gets close to the first down before they knock him away out of bounds. I think he's going to be just shy of the first down. Coming up was Donnie Malloy, the free safety along with Roderick McGee and where the ball is spotted they're going to be shy of the first down and Sean Johnson took a heck of a lick and he was going to hang in that right arm and shoulder down as he went to the sidelines the pursuit of the Choctaw defense stops the Gamecock wishbone again and once again good field position more than likely will result for Mississippi College. And Steve Bailey going for his sixth punt of the day. Fourth and about a half yard to go. Malloy is back. Bad snap, a little low, but he recovers. We no return on this, and it goes out of bounds, and let's call it the 48-yard line. So it's out of the 48-yard line, 52 yards away from Peter. 11.30 to go. Third quarter of play. Time out of the field and no score in this championship game. John Williams, the head man of Mississippi College, whose football team goes back out on the field. They have the football first down at 10 from the 48-yard line on their own side of the 50. Bolton and McAfee are wide out. They look for one of them. And he 
just cut in for a big loss. Wells just could not find anybody in the open. And Jimmy Hall, a defensive end, comes back to spilling for a tremendous loss back inside the 35-yard line. Make it inside the 40-yard line at about the 39. Sack number six on the year for Jimmy Hall, the transfer from Presbyterian College. He's a former linebacker, so he's got good quickness out of that defensive end spot. The senior out of Jonesboro, Georgia. Georgia's been a fertile recruiting ground for Bill Burgess's ball club. There's Jimmy Hall. 17 men on the 48-man squad for Jacksonville State reside in the state of Georgia. Wally Henry. They fake the reverse. This is McAfee. Back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's about all as Will Hutchinson stops him after a gain of about eight yards. You know, one of the reasons I suspect, Jack, that they do get so many players from the state of Georgia is they're about halfway toward the Georgia line from Birmingham. Now there, they say they're about equidistant between Birmingham and Atlanta. And certainly there's a lot of good football players in the state of Georgia. And Bill Burgess done a pretty good job. We're going to get a face mask call, I guess, at the end of the play against the Gamecocks. And Coach Burgess certainly is not going to be happy with that because it will move the ball back into Gamecock territory. It's only the five-yard inadvertent face mask penalty, but it keeps it at second down. As McAfee turned the corner, number seven, Will Hutchinson inadvertently grabbed the face mask. And good work, camera folks. But the advantage, not only they move back up the field, but they don't lose the down. So instead of second and long, it's second and about five. It'll be second down and five exactly with Taylor in motion. They don't get the first down as McAfee carries. That's Jimmy Hall in on another stop. And he has had a bunch of those this afternoon. They're down just inside the 43 yard line of Jacksonville State third and short and, and in, under these conditions although they still have fourth down up on the scoreboard the one you have to worry about is the down marker indicator with the chains and they've got third down there you know, almost think about this being a, a four down situation now you indeed do third down and one and it is a true one yard to go for the first down Two wide outs as they give up the middle. This is Taylor who carries for the first down as he gets it down to the 40 yard line. That was Kenny, Ronnie Kenny out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, who moved in to make the stop. First down for Mississippi College. The Choctaw is happy. Nice crowd on hand here today. This will be a cold day for this part of the United States. I, I think we can safely say, Ralph, whoever scores today is going to win because I think unless there's some major turnover, it's the way the game is evolving. First and ten, they call it the 41-yard line. He's looking to both overthrows him, but it's complete to Riley. He's wide out, and they get another first down. First time today. There have been two first downs put together back to back as Will Hutchinson makes the stop. Well, that's a great mismatch for Mississippi College. Lewis Riley is 6'4. Will Hutchinson is 5'6. You get the ball up in the air, you let that big body of Riley's protect the ball from the defender, and you've got a nice situation. And with Bolton running all over the place, you're basically getting one on one coverage against Riley. And they change, bringing Darrell Malone back in there over Hutchinson at that quarterback spot. He's 5'10 versus 5'6. Riley remains in, he's on his right side against him. McAfee, big run off the right side. McAfee still on his feet, down to the five yard line. McAfee with a beautiful run gets it down to the five as Malone makes a stop. After Nathaniel Bolton had thrown a great block for him. Well, you talk about Henry and Bolton, and you forget that McAfee must be a pretty fair football player to gain 1,100 yards. He got a good block there from Nathaniel Bolton, as you accurately described. Ralph, watch it again. Good lead block as well on the linebacker by Robert Taylor, making on the defensive end, Randy Beck. The fullback springing McAfee, first and goal at the five. 8.39 to go, the ball at the five, the second time this afternoon. Mississippi College has it there. 
They get nothing. Robert Taylor may have lost a half yard. Well, they brought the cheeseburger back into the ball game. Number 93, Orlando Adams. 6'1", 295 pounds. He and Eric Davis are going to be playing in that King Classic next month. That's a first-time event, an all-star game, pitting all-stars from Division 1A against all-stars from Divisions 1AA, Division 2, and Division 3. And Adams will be one of the representatives in that game. Sounds like a great idea. I for think an it's terrific. Game. Bolton's wide set to the right. They give right up the middle. This is McAfee, and he's close to the goal line. They ran right at the big cheese that time, Ralph, and got pretty good, pretty good surge from their offensive line. Good block indeed by Sean Oakley, the center, one-on-one -on -one with Orlando Adams, and an excellent surge makes it third and about a foot. Third and a foot is the call, and there's a man who looks like he has weathered many a storm on the sideline. He's won 112 games over at Mississippi County. Did not get it. McAfee is stopped at the line of scrimmage by Daryl Malone. So what do you do here, Jack Corrigan? You've already had one field goal blocked. Do you go for it or not? I think you have to go for it in terms, again, of field position. That if you don't make it, you're going to put you're going to put Jacksonville State deep in their own territory. This time, the cheeseburger says, "You blocked me once. You're not going to do it twice." And the big cheese was the key factor there as he met the ball carrier McAfee in the backfield. But John Williams says, we got to get points somehow. And he's going to go to Mr. Stewart again to try the field goal. Stephen Crawford is the holder. And their flag just went down. And I think the, clock, the play clock ran out. So that'll cost them five. And it'll be kicking it from the seven yard line. So that'll be a 17 yard attempt rather than a 12-yard attempt. That's not really that bad of a penalty because where the ball was, you were kicking from a very severe angle. They would have been kicking it from the 8-yard line, and since the ball is towards the right hash, it would have been a severe angle. You back up a little bit, it gives you at least a little bit better of an angle, and that's why Jacksonville State declined the penalty. And we should call it a 24-yard attempt. They put the ball down to the 14. a low snap but they recover it and they kick it through and finally there is something on the board Mississippi College gets what will be called an official 24 yard field goal and their fans just have now something to be jubilation about well there's time out of the field the score is Mississippi College 3 Jacksonville State nothing will be right Order your copy of the official NCAA Division II football championship program. Send a check for $5 to championship programs. P.O. Box 8, 1989, Lexington, Kentucky, 40593, 1989. Again, P.O. Box 1989, Lexington, 4053, 1989. Shane Stewart off of the hole from Stephen Crawford, and as soon as he hit it, he knew he had it through the uprights. The Choctaws get the first points up on the board with 6.13 to play here in the third period. If there's a glimmer of light for Jacksonville State, it's the fact they might get their best field position of the ball game here on this kickoff. Edmondson and Malone are back. Jenkins will kick it off. They pick it up and start to move from the 20. That is Malone. He'll be first and down, first and ten. On the 32-yard line. Again, it is difficult, as we pointed out to you all afternoon, to ascertain where the yardage markers are because the field has been covered with snow. The 19-yard field goal culminating the 50-yard drive. The Jacksonville State forced the field goal with the big third down play by Orlando Adams. Gullich behind center. Happens to be Keith Henderson. He's an all-conference center. 
It just right up the middle. Roy Carpenter, who has really been a workhorse, having carried now 11 times on the afternoon for a total of 66 yards. This is an important series of downs for Jacksonville State. Even if they don't score off of this possession, they've got to gain some of their confidence back that their offense can move. They've not really been able to su sustain anything this afternoon, just the two first downs. They've got to get their confidence level back up. Daryl Sanders is wide to the left. Jacksonville does not like to throw. They like to run from that wishbone, and they do it again with Carpenter just grinding out one yard, and Milton McGee, the tackle on the left side, makes the stop. Certainly, they have to be worried about All-American nose tackle Terry Fleming, but because of their great concern for Fleming, they've basically gone one-on-one -on -one or tried to run away from Milton McGee, and McGee has played a big ball game for Mississippi College out of his defensive tackle spot. Approaching the five-minute mark for period three. Jacksonville State with a football and trailing by three. Gully. They fumble it. Boy, it's anybody's guess as to who's got their thing right now. They say that Jacksonville State Sean Johnson is the man who recovers it. Well, once again, without any pressure from the defense, a Gamecock ball carrier just loses the handle of the football. And again, they have to run it away. And just as John Williams of Mississippi College talked about, Bill Burgess right there, the Jacksonville State coach, had to be worried about the amount of handling of the football you have to do in the wishbone on a cold day and a sloppy field. And Jacksonville State has yet to convert a third down. Malloy and a deep safety. Bailey will punt it. something after all of it. He's out of bounds at about the 36 yard line after a good punt and a short return. It'll be first down and 10 from the 36. There's time out on the field with a score. Mississippi College three Jacksonville State nothing. Three nothing Mississippi College. We started out the chill factor was 24 degrees. You think that young man driving that camera isn't cold. The great humorous Jerry Clower from the state of Mississippi said the same guy who developed the chill factor was the same guy who developed the cholesterol count. Ever, <laughs> ever since they developed the chill factor, his mother-in-law had been cold. I feel like his mother-in-law today. Four minutes to go in the third quarter of play. This is McAfee. It's right back to the line of scrimmage, possibly a gain of one and no more. Defense has really been tough on both sides of that line today. Well, it's tough to get leverage as a blocker on that line of scrimmage, and the greater success for Mississippi College has been throwing the football because it's much easier to pass block when you're just trying to set your feet and ward somebody off. When you're trying to drive off your feet and gain some leverage and push somebody back, it's a lot more difficult. You can see the difference, 119 to minus five passing. Jacksonville State has its second team defensive line there. Lyle, Stewart, Sanders, and Green. And they do the job. They spill him for a loss of about one, as Henry couldn't find anybody to go to. Where gloves would be a big seller in this <laughs> session saying today. Well, Jacksonville State knows they have to do something defensively to try and create a turnover. They are not by nature a blitzing ball club but they have been forced to do that with more frequency here this afternoon to try and create something and already the clock starts to become a factor you can say how could the clock be a factor in a three to nothing ball game well the way the game has gone it certainly is a factor the only starters defensively in now Jack for Jacksonville are the, are the defensive backs Malone Bell and Davis they grind it out again getting up across the 40-yard line to about the 42. Mitch Thames was the ball carrier. It was a third down, 11 call. And well short of the first down. That was Brian Stewart who made the initial stop. That was a protective call there. Let the clock keep rolling. Make sure you don't lose any more field position. Rely on your punter, who happens to be a very strong NFL prospect as a punter, and, and maintain that field position advantage. Gets away. Edmondson, boy, drives him back. Edmondson 
takes it. He's at the 10, 15. It looks like he's down at about the 19-yard line. What a great punt by Wally Henry. And even though Edmondson made a fine return, that kick was struck so well that even with a 10 or 15 yard return, they're still backed up deep in their own territory. But at 38 seconds to go, they take it over and they mark it at the 18 yard line officially. First down and 10 yards to go as Jacksonville State goes back on the offensive. For most of the afternoon, it has been three plays and a punt for both sides. Blue wide set to the lower part of his green. Three nothing. Jacksonville State trails. Gullage on the keeper. Daniel Ailey. That is John Knox out of Gulfport, Mississippi, along with Milton McGee. Great play here by Terry Fleming, the All-American nose guard. Right here, Gullage wants to give the ball to his fullback, but Fleming sliding off the block denies Gullage that opportunity. David has to keep it himself. He bounces off of John Knox, but gets just a couple of yards on the play. It's right at the 20, second down and eight. Terry Fleming, he was MVP of the defensive squad on the Gulf South Conference team that was picked yesterday. Intercepted. Mississippi College gets it. That's Donnie Malloy. He comes up. The big interception at this point of the game. Mike Cullen brings him down. What a great interception on a cold day. They try and go up the field to Shaky Sanders, their wide receiver, and he's open if Malloy doesn't make the play. That was just a remarkable catch. Third interception of the season for the senior out of McGee, Mississippi. He was an all-conference player right there. He gave you a good example why. 55 seconds to go as they take the football over at the 32-yard line over in Jacksonville State Territory. First down and 10. Wally Henry. They do reverse it this time. This is Bolton. They lose yardage about three. As they lose it back to the 35-yard line. Reginald James, a linebacker, makes the stop. Well, with these kind of field conditions, Ralph, when you're running some kind of reverse play like that, if it doesn't happen right now, it's just not going to happen because you can't accelerate and get the kind of momentum you need to run away from the pursuit. The pursuit just strung out Nathaniel Bolton, waited for him to finally make his move, and then just shut him down. Robert Taylor's in the backfield as they come out of the eye. Taylor along with McAfee. This is McAfee. He gets nothing. Right about a half yard behind the line of scrimmage. Jimmy Hall met him and brought him down. And that play will end our third quarter. Out of the end of three, here at the Brawley Stadium in Florence, Alabama, the national championship game for Division II. The score is Mississippi College 3, Jacksonville State University nothing. We'll be right back after these messages. It is 3-0 Mississippi College leads. We start the final 15 minutes of the national championship game for Division II. And you can see the stats show even more dominance now by Mississippi College. Jacksonville State unable to get positive yardage passing the football. And on their last pass, it was picked off by Donnie Malloy, who set up this now third down and about 14 situation for the Choctaws of Mississippi College. For four. Four third down conversions today. Third and 14 now. Henry. So they'll have to punt it again. They drop Henry back in the snow. Jimmy Hall put the pressure on him. They were trying to set up a screen for Robert Taylor, and they had a chance to gain some yardage, but Jimmy Hall put such pressure on Wally Henry, he couldn't wait for the screen to develop before he threw the football. Eric Davis will be back in safety as Henry prepares to kick it. His sixth punt of the afternoon, averaging 34 plus. There's Davis. Davis will signal for a fair catch and take it right there. About the 11 yard line. So at the 11, they take it over first down and 10. And Jacksonville State goes back on the open. They buy themselves down 3 0. 
is we're back here in Raleigh Stadium. 14.49 to go in the ball game. They officially put it on the 12 for its first down 10 for Jacksonville State. From the wishbone. This is Patrick. Patrick out across the 15 to around the 17 yard line. A gain of five before Brian Richardson takes him out of bounds. I think this is a big series coming up now for Jack State. Without question, they have not been able to sustain anything all afternoon. They just have a couple of first downs on the day. If they're going to be national champions, they may have to mount an 88 yard drive to do it. They had beaten Mississippi College earlier this year. We pointed out to you. That's Brian Stevenson carrying out close to the first down. Bruce Poole, the defensive end, makes the stop. They go back to the basic wishbone play. Now, Brian Stevenson and Gulledge reads it, decides to keep it in the belly of his fullback, and Stevenson, who has got the most yardage on the year out of the fullback spot on his first carry, picks up the first down for the Gamecocks. First and 10, ball on the 23. They will change a lot of plays at the line. That's what he just did. This is Stevenson, second carry, gets two. Out to the 25. And guess who he ran into? Terry Fleming, the All-American nose guard, and Roderick McGee, the linebacker. You can see right there that the center, Keith Henderson, slipped coming off his snap, and that enabled Fleming to go right up over the top of him and make contact along with McGee, the linebacker. Daryl Sanders is in. Top of your screen. The wishbone again. David Gulledge out of Bell City, Alabama. Falls the signal. This is Packer. He gets out to the 30-yard line. That's it. It's a gain of five. Terry Fleming, the big man, makes the stop on it. They say only a lack of weight's going to keep him out of the NFL, Jack. Well, he's got great quickness and has good leverage, but at 6'2", 230 pounds, he's just not big enough to be a, a lineman, and he's been a down lineman his whole career. You're asking a pro team an awful lot to let him play a couple of years and learn how to be a linebacker if he could even do that. Blue and Ray are split. They needed third and three. And looks like they may have picked up their first third down conversion of the day. Brian Stevenson carries it, and they do. Well, now this is the first sustained drive that Jack Stewart has had going. And as I mentioned at the start of the drive, Ralph, it's a situation for them because of the way they eat up the clock. They aren't going to get many more opportunities to drive the football down the field. This may be their best chance to try and get the go-ahead or equalizing score. First and 10, 33. This is Johnson. Sean Johnson gets across the 35 to around the 37-yard line, a gain of four. Sometimes in a wishbone attack, you don't see what happens away from the ball after the snap and handoff has been made. The quick pitch was forced because Bruce Poole was right in the face of David Gulledge, and it was an excellent effort by Jacksonville State to make some positive yardage out of a play that looked like it was going to lose yardage. Second and six. Twelve minutes to go in the game. Jacksonville fans sense that something may be about to happen for their, their team. Just about a yard shy of the first down. Brian Stevenson on the carry. Well, a remarkable thing about this Jacksonville State team on their way to 13 consecutive victories that you don't always see in, in ball clubs that are undefeated, Ralph. They were behind in half their ball games this year at halftime. But they've always been able to rise up in the third and fourth periods and do what was necessary to come up with a victory. They're trying to do it again here in the title game. Trying to act like this was a regular week, but Coach Bill Burgess says it wasn't a regular week. They get their second, third down conversion in a row, and Steve Patrick does it, getting it out to the 45-yard line. 
the difference in this drive, Ralph, from earlier in the ball game when they've not been able to sustain a drive, the difference here has been their success on first down. A wishbone team has to be able to pick up four yards on first down and then three or four on second down to set up that third and short situation where then the diversity of the offense can hurt you. When it's third and long, they're much more limited in what they can do. The ball on the 45. It started on their own 12-yard line. Big play against the green that time over to Sean Johnson. He gets out to the 49. A gain of four where Conway and McGee make the stop. They keep going full back and full back and full back. This time they run the counter play. You see Terry Fleming step up to meet the full back. Instead, it's the counter play. And Sean Johnson was able to pick up almost four yards. It's second down and and just a little more than six yards to go. But that's the kind of first down yardage they've wanted to get all afternoon. 37 yards since they began nine plays ago. Second and seven, we'll call it on the scoreboard. Gulich, he gets nothing. A loss of maybe one as the end. Bruce Poole again nails it. Big play defensively for Mississippi College. They were in that situation where they had to force a third and long for the Gamecock offense, and they certainly did at that time. They won the battle on the line of scrimmage that time. They ran a little bit of a stunt this way. They fired the linebacker, John Knox, and he was able to disrupt the play. Third down and seven. Biggest play of the ball game, Ralph, right here. And Gulledge threw a rocket. I mean, all he had to do was just put a little touch on that ball and get it to him. Instead, he really overthrew that football. I mean, just had way too much on it. It was the big second down play, Ralph, that took them out of the wishbone, forced them into doing something they don't like to do, and that's why they have to punt again. And Steve Bailey will punt it. Donnie Malloy again back there. Eighth punt of the day. Well, that's a bunch of them. It's about a three-yard gain. Daryl Malone stops him after that return. 9.17 to go with time out of the field. Your score is Mississippi College 3, Jacksonville State nothing. We'll be right back. Looking at that fire makes me as warm as I have been all <laughs> afternoon, Jack Corrigan. I'm trying to figure out how we way. can do that up here in the uh, booth. That would help a little bit. We may start what? We may start some to get some offense down of the field, too. Can 3 nothing hold up for this game? That's a situation here for Mississippi College. They've got to get a couple of first downs. This is the first time they've really been backed up deep in their own territory. And for that top-ranked defense of the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State, this is the time that they've got to step up. First and 10, Henry handing off. This is the man who's worked for them today, Taylor. And Taylor gets great yardage. He runs them out in the shadows if there had been a son of their goal post. And Freddie Goodwin makes the stop. Biggest running play of the ball game for Mississippi College. They go to their big load, 235-pound sophomore Robert Taylor out of Long Beach, Mississippi. He did the right thing, Ralph. He went north-south. Day like today, don't fool around running the sidelines. You go north and south. That's the best way to get into the end zone. That was a gain of 15. First down and 10 with the ball out at the 31-yard line. Give going up the middle to McAfee, and McAfee's finding running room. Their offensive line obviously sensing that the national championship is well within their grasp. Blows off the left side of the defensive line of Jacksonville State and allows them to pick up almost nine yards. Well, John Williams, the head coach of Mississippi College, his forte is the offensive line. And when we talked to John yesterday, he tried to downplay his line. He said, well, they're young kids in the early trying to come along they're not as strong a line as we've had in earlier years that might have been to jack up this ball club a little bit a direct quote was we're here in spite of, <laughs> of the offensive line well the offensive line is doing it right now as they open up the hole and get the first down and more for robert taylor 
They're just taking it right out of the Jacksonville State offensive playbook, saying, here it comes, try and stop it. It's accomplishing two things, Ralph. They've already gained back the field position, and they're making the clock run. We're down to just over eight minutes to play in the ball game, and for Jacksonville State, their chances of a national championship slip away as that clock continues to wind its way down towards the conclusion of this one. And it may slip away as the ice came into the area last night. Again, right up the middle of the great hit put on is McAfee as he gets right to midfield. Let's take a look at the offensive line of Mississippi College here as they try and come off the ball against the Gamecocks. They were running a little trap action there behind Jimmy Harrison, and McAfee slipped underneath him, number 60, Jimmy Harrison. Leading the way for McAfee as they're up to midfield on the second and seven. 7.15 to go. Second down and seven. Jacksonville defense has been bending. Will it break? Not this time. They gain just one as Robert Taylor does it. They, they ran the trap again, and Yancey Dials, number 59, the linebacker, does a good job of reading it. Here's Jimmy Harrison on the trap, but underneath making the stop was actually Reginald James, the other inside linebacker coming along with Yancey Dials. But John Williams is accomplishing what he wants to. He said, I'd love to run the ball more than we ran it this year. I didn't think we were able to do it. Well, right here, they've run it enough to wind the clock down and get it out to midfield. Third and six. He said he wanted to throw today when he wanted to throw, not in the situation where Jacksonville made him throw. They don't get the first down. They're going to be just shy of that. McAfee had a chance for the first down, but he slipped and stumbled down at the 45-yard line. They'll be about two yards shy, but the clock keeps moving, and a very effective weapon for him, Wally Henry, their fine punter, will drop them with a good punt will drop Jacksonville State back deep in their own territory and force a grinded out team to try and do it with not much time left on the clock. Got 10 men coming. And almost got him. May have gotten just a slight piece of that one because the puck was so shy. Daryl Malone was the guy who got back there and possibly touched it. It was hard for us to tell. Well, that was a big play indeed. Malone came in untouched and certainly disrupted the punt. That's what Christmas is all about. We're not far away from that. There's time out on the field with a score three. Mississippi College, nothing for Jacksonville State. The Gamecock trying to get his ball club all fired up. They've come up with a football on the 32-yard line. First down and 10. They trail 3-0. 545 to go. David Gellich, whose ball club has been very ineffective today on offense, has the wishbone behind it. It is incomplete. Sanders had it and let it slip away. It would have been a first down if he'd held on to the football. You can see the sense of urgency already for Jacksonville State throwing the ball on first down. Two for seven for minus five yards. The interception that helped set up the field goal, and that's been the only score of the ball game. Blue and Henry are in as wide outs. Again, he looks to throw. Over the middle, it is complete. That is Blue. Blue gets the first down and up to about the 47-yard line. McGee makes the stop. They spread out the field. Kevin Blue, senior wide receiver out of Alexandria, Louisiana, running a curl route. Gullage again throws a rocket. And Blue gets the ball out near midfield as he slipped one tackle. Slade Stinnett, their field goal kicker, hit a 46-yarder this year, Ralph, but I'm sure it was under much better field conditions than what we've got today. Slight gain, and I mean very slight, by Roy Carpenter. Keep in mind, this is a championship game, and we will have a winner. So for Jacksonville State, a field goal keeps their hopes alive as the clock has slipped under five minutes to play. But they're going to need about 30 more yards of turf on this snowy day to get a chance for a field goal. 
Sanders and Blue wide outs, one on each side. Second and nine. It is complete over the blue. First down again. Jacksonville State is moving. McGee again to make the stop. Well, Kevin Blue has the best hands on the ball club, according to Coach Bill Burgess, and with the game on the line, that's who they've been going to. Ten catches on the year for Kevin Blue. You don't get many catches as a wide receiver in a wishbone attack, but Blue has stepped up twice now here for Bill Burgess. They're still about 15 yards out of field goal range. First and 10, 420, the clock is now running. A handoff goes to Sean Johnson. Johnson gets inside the 35-yard line. Actually, the little Utah, they'll give that as a forward pass as Roderick McGee again steps in to make the stop. First contact made by Chanel Conway, who was the dominant player in the first half for Mississippi College. He's not been as much of a factor here in the second half, but made a good open field tackle there along with Roderick McGee. Second and seven. Go. Sanders was the intended receiver. It goes back at third down and seven from the 34. Here's the head honcho from Jacksonville State, Bill Burgess. He played for Shug Jordan over at Auburn. Well, it's four down time now for Jacksonville State with 341 to go in the ball game. They don't pick up the first down here. They're going to go for it on fourth down because they are still outside of the range of Slade Stinnett. Third down, seven. Drop it. Flags went down. Well, everybody moved except Keith Henderson never snapped the football. A costly procedure penalty upcoming against Jacksonville State. Legal procedure. Everybody moved but Keith Henderson. And if he doesn't snap the football, we've got a problem. It doesn't do any good. Now they really take away the running threat at third and 12. From Mississippi College's perspective, you've got to think that the pass is forthcoming. Stewart, rather Sanders and Blue. He's got Why not? He's got Blue to his right. Look for Blue on the right side. Gullage, the quarterback. He's keeping it rolling. Got intercepted. He threw it for Blue. Intercepted and returned back up to about the 44-yard line by Bobby Hawthorne. Bobby Hawthorne with the interception. We've got a flag on the play. I believe we've got a procedure penalty against Jacksonville State. A motion penalty against the Gamecocks in the second interception of the afternoon. They wanted to go to Kevin Blue. Bobby Hathorne, the senior from Brookhaven, Mississippi, and when Blue fell down, Hathorne stepped up and picked off the ball. And now with three and a half minutes to go in the ball game, both teams have all three of their timeouts left. Jacksonville State is going to be forced to use those timeouts to preserve some clock. Wally Henry goes back in to run the ball club. And Jack, in the first half, we promised the people the story about him being a six-year man. He was redshirted a year, then he played a semester, and he was injured, he laid out another year, then he came back to play, he went back again and set out and took taking part-time student work, and by doing this in Division II, you can continue to go well, until you've gone six years. The di well, the difference, actually, he's gone five years plus this semester. The rule in Division II is that you can play your four years of eligibility over ten semesters. And that's why Wally Henry in this is 10th semester is allowed to do it. In Division I football, you have five years from the point of entrance to do it. So the veteran trying to come up with the national championship ring, and he's 245 away from that. Second down eight. And you get just one yard is Robert Taylor. Halfback spot carry is it. Jacksonville State signaling that they want to call a timeout with two minutes and 36 seconds to go. They get the timeout. And with timeout on the field, the score with 2.36 to go. Touchdown.
and the Niners have done it again. Yes, they're the team of the 80s, and this is their story. Ronnie Lott's production of the team of the 80s. Fan, this is our video. A personal view of our team, the coaches, and the game. It's a look behind the scenes on and off the field. Hey, you got to check it out. The video is called the team of the 80s. You're going to love it. <laughs> Here's a real insider's look at the San Francisco 49ers. Thrill to the winning drive from Super Bowl 23 with your 49ers in a knockdown, fun-filled video. A little sentiment, a little emotion, lots of thrills, and some good laughs, all yours. Here's how to get your copy. To order, use your major credit card and call 1-800-643-6464 or send $14.95 plus $350 for tax, shipping, and handling to Ronnie Lott, Department P, 2410 Charleston Road, Mountain View, California, 94043. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank the championship media coordinator, Jeff Hodges, of the University of North Alabama, athletics director and head football coach, John Williams of Mississippi College, and his staff, and sports information director, Norman Goff. And from Jacksonville State, athletics director, Jerry Cole, and head football coach, Bill Burgess, and his staff, and sports information director, Mike Galloway. And many thanks to John Moody, Ronnie Pinnell, the statistician and spotter, year after year here in Florence, Alabama. Done a nice job again. This is Ralph Packer along with Jack Corrigan. We have 2.36 to go and a third and seven call for Mississippi College. The pitch off is to McAfee. They catch him and spill him back at about the 45-yard line as Freddie Goodwin comes through there to get him. Freddie Goodwin is the man who comes through to make the stop. That's John Williams. His team holds on 3-0. Let's take a look again at the defense of Jacksonville State. They know they have to stop him on this play as they pitch out to McAfee. McAfee running sideline to sideline. And you see number 31, Freddie Goodwin, coming in to make the stop after Brian Stewart out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, had slowed him down. Now Jacksonville called another timeout. Jacksonville State calling their second timeout of this half. They have one more to go. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go. Bill Burgess. He looks a little like Ralph Shug Jordan, his former head coach down at Auburn. One time outlet, that's what he is signaling now. Fourth down and eight. Mississippi College has three. They hope not to have to use any of those. We have Travis Henry back to punt. Nikki Edmondson is back to receive. They'd like to get a big return. The last time, it was a short kick from Henry. This one is not a boomer that Edmondson signals and takes at the 20 yard line. At, it goes first down and 10. They'll mark it between the 20 and the 21. Look at the Mississippi College cheerleaders and the Choctaw. The fine Baptist school down in Clinton, Mississippi, has built quite a football program of reputation. They came into this football game. With the record of 10 and 3 this year. Gullich throwing incomplete. Well, Ralph Hacker, I'm down on the sidelines now, and certainly for Jacksonville State, they don't like to throw the football, and they're going to be forced to throw the football. And right now, Mississippi College, you can see not a great deal, but they're starting to get a little softer with their coverage in the secondary. Their plan right now, just keep the receiver, keep the ball carrier in front of them. And it's second down and 10, Jack. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go. The ball on the 20-yard line. Again, Gullich being rushed. They got him. They spill him back inside the 15 at about the 13-yard line. It was Buckman who got back to bring him down. And, Jack, he's been in a bunch of those stops today. They've done an excellent job all afternoon of containing David Gulledge, led by their All-American Terry Fleming. Milton McGee has, has also played a great game at tackle. They've done an outstanding job defensively. It is third down and 17. Jacksonville State has to convert this. It is incomplete. Just a little underthrown to Daryl Sanders. A minute 43 to go. Jacks, they've got to hang in there and try to get something on this with fourth down and 17. I'm down here on the Mississippi College sidelines and the near sidelines, and you know what a storybook 
year it's been, at least in the playoffs for this team. They didn't know whether they were going to make the Division II playoffs. They were one of the last teams to get in. They had to beat the top seed, Texas A&I, in the first round to even continue. Now they're less than two minutes away from their first national championship in football. Minute 43, exactly. Fourth down, 17. Gully may be the biggest play of his college career. And it is complete. This is Patrick. He gave it the old college try, and it's going to be just a little bit shy of the first down. That was a great effort by Steve Patrick. This was an unbelievable effort. I mean, you're in a situation here where they've got a long way to go for the first down, and all they can do is throw a little pass out into the flat, and Patrick very nearly made this a first down. He came within just a yard or two of getting the first down, but now all the Choctaws have to do is wind down 91 seconds and they're national champions. There's not an awful lot that Jacksonville State can do unless there's a fumble because Jacksonville State only has one timeout left. Well, Patrick was a senior and he tried to make his last play for Jacksonville a big one. They just give it to Taylor and Taylor just hits right at the line. Doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage, and Tracy Allen makes a stop on him. And Jacksonville State quickly calls their last timeout. So with a minute 27 seconds to go, after this, it's just a matter of taking it and kneeling down, Jack. Exactly, Ralph. They don't have to risk another handoff right now. All they have to do is just snap the football, and Wally Henry will take a step or two back or down on one knee, and then they'll just wind this clock down. Jack, it was the kind of football game, Ralph, where we thought whoever could make a score was going to win the football game, and the opportunistic Mississippi College defense with the interception by Donnie Malloy that set up the field goal, looks like that's going to be the difference. We had thought as you and I were coming out here this morning and talking about it, the fact that the weather would play into the hands of Mississippi College, and it certainly has played that way. Well, on a sloppy field with cold temperatures, it's tough to be in a high-risk offense like the wishbone can be. The wishbone's a kind of offense where you're going to have turnovers. And with the sloppy conditions, they weren't able to use their speed to the corners very effectively. And Mississippi College did what they had to do to slow down the Gamecocks. A minute 27. Wally Henry out of Pontotoc. Mississippi gives to Taylor out of Long Beach, Mississippi. They get right there to the line of scrimmage and no more. A minute 16. Look at Taylor. He's shaken up on the play. John Williams is up to this point, held his composure very well. Well, they set the clock now, Ralph, which means that basically they're, they're in great shape as we hit the one minute mark now. They'll take this snap. They might even take a delay of game penalty if they had to, although I think they'd try and snap it with one second left on the clock. And by the time they unpile and reset the ball again, we could be well under the 25 seconds left. There's the snap. It came exactly one second, Jack, as you called it. 40 seconds. Clock is running. There's John Williams. In a few seconds, we should see a smile break almost as wide as the state of Mississippi on this man's face. Everything just started. They do not have to run another play. On a snow-covered day, Mississippi College has won their first national championship in Florence, Alabama. And they have upset Jacksonville State. Arena. But now the official clock on the field says, wait a minute, there's one second left and stops the game. So the celebration will have to stop. They're going to get a delay of game penalty with one second left, Ralph, but all of them, you know, back up five yards and then snap the ball to Wally Henry and that'll be it. That's all it will be and then it can be an official celebration. Henry, who finished seconds on the second team 
for the All Gulf South Conference, just behind Gullage at the quarterback. Holds the ball high, and victory and the championship belong to the Choctaws. We'll be back in just a minute, and Jack Corrigan will talk to John Williams, the head coach of the Choctaws. The final score at Mississippi College for Jacksonville, nothing. We'll be right back to Brawley Stadium after this. Mississippi College, the Division II national champions with a 3 to nothing victory over the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. Tomorrow afternoon will be the 54th birthday of the gentleman standing alongside of me, and a group of young men gave you a great birthday present, John. I've never had one quite like it. This football game, you told us yesterday that on a sloppy field, if it was at least not raining while it would go on, you thought it might be a problem for a wishbone offense. But I think a lot of credit has to go to your defense. They really rose to the occasion today. Hey, it's all year. They've done it all year, and I can't believe they did it 14, 14 straight times. But the defense certainly won the ball game. The offense did just enough. You know, we didn't make those big mistakes, didn't give them the ball down on the end zone, had to make them work for it. But the defense is fantastic. Our special teams did pretty well. Kick that field goal. John, this football team, Cinderella sometimes an overused phrase to talk about great finishes, but you didn't know if you were going to make it into the playoffs, then you drew Texas A&I in the first round, yet here you are, Division II national champions. I don't know what to say. We just, <laughs> we just champs. That's all I know. Great what? bunch of kids. I'm sorry I don't have anything to say. On the defensive side, you've got a great All-American in Terry Fleming. He played another fine football game today, but you had people like Milton McGee and Chanel Conway step up and play big ball games, and then your secondary with the interceptions, uh, Malloy's interception that set up the winning points. Well, it was a great interception. Uh, it's nothing to say. We wanted it real, real bad. There's no question about it all the way. Even our old poor offense did extremely well, as poor as they were. But the defense, you know, anytime you shut somebody out, you got a chance to win. So. It was it was fantastic. It, it was you, if you knew our kids, you'd know how deserving it was for them. Well, on a snowy day in Alabama, a little team from Mississippi, the Division II national champions. John, happy birthday, and more importantly, congratulations on your great great victory. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. John Williams, the head coach of the Mississippi College Choctaws, the Division II national champions. Back upstairs to you, Ralph. It's 3-0 is the victory. Let's look at the stats for this afternoon. For Mississippi College, they had 111 yards rushing, while Jacksonville State 127. They had 119 yards through the air and 230 yards of total offense compared to 170 for Jacksonville State. Eight first downs compared to six. Jacksonville State turned the ball over five times, and that indeed was a telltale sign. This has been an NCAA Productions telecast.